All right, uh, welcome everyone to today's webinar. We have a really, really amazing discussion for you guys. We've got some uh, of the industry experts on sustainer giving programs that are gonna be joining for a really fascinating panel discussion. We're gonna be looking at some of the current trends around sustainer giving, as well as some things that you might wanna be considering as we look towards the future of these programs at your nonprofit. We've got about 30 minutes for today's presentation. Um, uh, so let's just jump right in. Uh, this webinar is being recorded. So if you have to drop early or have a colleague who wanted to join, you can share that recording with them. Uh, it'll be going to your inbox within about 24 hours. Um, and then also take a second to locate the Q&A button on your Zoom toolbar. Um, that's where you'll, you will be able to interact with our speakers. Um, and we've saved the final few minutes of today's webinar for your questions. Um, so you can go ahead and pop them right in there as they occurred to you and we will address them at the end of the, at the, end of the discussion. All right, I am thrilled to welcome today's guests. So first we are thrilled to welcome Erica Wasdorf and Erica is the president of A Direct Solution. Um, she lives over in Massachusetts. She's also an AFP master trainer and author and regularly blogs and gives presentation on appeals, direct mail and monthly giving. I don't know a single month without seeing her name in Nonprofit Pro. And so I am thrilled that she was able to, to be a guest speaker today. We also have Joe Sullivan, and Joe is a social working fundraiser who has worked for amazing brands like ASPCA and the Wounded Warrior Project. Currently, she is serving as the Chief Community and Development Officer for the Houston SBCA. Welcome, Joe. And then we also have Rebecca Gregory Segovia, and she serves as the Executive Vice President of Giving DNA and at Pursuant. With over two decades of leadership experience, she's a seasoned fundraising executive with a strong vision and passion to help nonprofits reach more donors and raise more dollars to further their mission. And then finally, last but not least, we are welcoming Brittany Mathias. And Brittany is Associate Vice President Client Strategy at Pursuant. She's a motivational leader focused on growing the income, community engagement, and sustainability of leading charitable organizations and inspirational brands. And Brittany will be sharing um, just some insights from her work serving all of our clients here at Pursuant. Um, so without uh, any further ado, let's just dive right in and take a quick look at where we've been in this series on sustainer giving and then get our speakers uh, rolling with the discussion. So uh, this today is the final um, installment of this series on sustainer giving. And if you missed the previous ones, um, you will be you should be able to find those on our website if they're not there. Um, and we also will be creating kind of a hub for all of our newest and best resources on sustainer giving that will be uh, shared with you in the future. Um, and so if you missed any one of these uh, epic installments in this series, we encourage you to track that down or email us if you're having trouble locating it. All right. So I think with that out of the way, Becca, let's let's look at the overview of the landscape for sustainer giving as we kind of dive into this discussion. Sure. Uh, thanks, Leah. And thank you, um, panelists. We're so excited to have you here today. And thanks to the audience for joining us. Um, if you've been, we're going to move on to the next slide. If you've been with us in this series that um, Leah was just talking about, you probably have heard us talk about some of these things that mm -hmm. are driving what's happening in our industry right now and why now is the time more than any other time. If you don't have a sustainer giver giving program up and running, it, let's do it. And if you do have one, how do we think about optimizing it? And here are some of the reasons why. So we've been talking about during this series, just the um, unstable a market that we're in, inflation being as high as it is right now, wages not keeping up, consumer sentiment being down, and the potential um, looming recession. Those are all things that we have to take into account as fundraisers and honestly as donors as we're thinking about the organizations that we care about and want to empower. And so now more than ever, your case for support um, for an or as your organization as well as for your sustaining giving program is so very important. There's some philanthropic trends that we've been looking at. So um, donors have been uh, down, dollars up, so increased revenue per donor, but we don't have as many giving as we did. Um, seeing that retention slippage from 2020, so that crisis giving that um, may have happened during that time, are we able to retain and actually build the relationships um, with those donors? And so that's another reason where we're kind of saying, all right, let's take a look at what's happening and how do we potentially move the needle um, on sustained giving and, and some of the answers as to why this is a good program kind of are in the next two bullet points. 
the consumer trends. We are now in the subscription age. I mean, if, if we were to poll right now, do you have a subscription? I would guess that everybody has at least one Netflix, Amazon, who knows what it is, but you probably have one. Um, and so that that's the mindset that our buyers, our donors, our consumers are in right now. And so that's very important. It's also important to have that omni-channel experience. Um, so not only just asking them to do it digitally, but what does that mail look, what does it look like in the mail? What does it look like in your conversations with them? So we've got to think about how our donors are experiencing the brands that they love and we need to show up in those ways. So that hyper-personalization and segmentation is so important. And then there are things that are happening. They're just consumer trends, like the new MasterCard rules that we talked about in our last session. Mm -hmm. um, and then most importantly, it just boils down to your mission. Um, we want to make sure that you are able to achieve the things that you're trying to achieve as fundraisers and as uh, cause-driven organizations. And so we all know that that sustainer giving allows us to build that lifetime value with the donor, that retention with the donor, and um, so that they can be with us for the long term. And so we are we are passionate, all of us on this call today, about getting that sustaining giving program either up and running or optim um, optimized. And so before we go into our first question, we have a poll question that we're going to ask. And while we're pulling that poll up, um, the question is, first of all, we just want to know, uh, of those of you on the call, how many of you have um, a sustainer program? So very simple yes, no, that'll help us kind of understand the audience that's with us. Um, and while you guys are voting, um, Erica, Joe, uh, Brittany, anything you'd have to add on why sustainer give or now, giving now? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about it, obviously. So I've been doing this for 30 years. So I've seen the power, you know, through multiple, multiple disasters. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, you know, 9-11, uh, you know, like uh, lots and lots of different things. And unfortunately, there's so many more disasters happening now. So getting that predictable revenue is, is so absolutely important. key. Absolutely. Agree. Predictable yeah. revenue. If nothing else, everything else scares you, here are those two words, predictable revenue. Yeah. And that's exactly what I was going to say as well. So I'll um, times three yeah. that it, it's <laughs> having the insight and the, the visibility on what to expect in the coming years from your retaining donors. All right. Do we have poll results? All right. So 59% of you um, already have one in flight. And yay. yay, we're with you. We are with you. Do it. Um, for those of you um, that don't have one uh, up and running, we are here to help you at least start um, the process at your organization. Hopefully, give you some advice that you can take with you um, as you go back to your team and say, "All right, it's time." <laughs> um, so, on our our first question that we want to ask our team here is. Um, and I'm going to point it to Erica first. What are the challenges that you're seeing that are holding back organizations from maybe starting or growing their program? And as we learned, we've got kind of both on the call. So what, what are those challenges that you're seeing in the marketplace? Yeah, so I actually got a t-shirt and I hope that you can read <laughs> it. Okay. Because it. it says, hold on, let me overthink this. Okay, so that is probably one of the biggest challenges when it comes to uh, starting and growing your sustainer program. Like people just overthink it way too much and they agonize about the emails and what have you. And again, you know, when I started in monthly giving like 30 years ago, we only had mail and phone. That was it. Online didn't exist. Email didn't exist, right? Facebook, social media, texting, none of that exists, right? So, um, so it was a little bit harder to, to grow a program, but now you've got the tools, but you just gotta, you just gotta start. That's, that's the biggest challenge is just the overthinking, thinking that everything has to be perfect because it never will be perfect, but it's, it will be totally imperfect if you don't start, right? So, um, so that's, my view on the biggest challenge is to overthinking it. Agreed. Yeah. And is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, yes, all of that. And then I would also add, if you're on the inside of an organization, you may have challenges both with your executive director and board of directors if they have not had exposure to monthly giving programs in their careers. It is a little bit of a different shape of investment. 
Now, in some cases, and you know, you'll hear from Erica and from Brittany, you can do it with very little investment just by making sure your landing pages have a monthly giving option and your website. And there are things that you can sort of do to start philosophically changing dialogue with your donors that don't take a lot of money. But once your program kind of hits that, we've put it out there and we believe in it. If we're going to get more of these types of donors, we have to actively recruit and you start moving into things like telemarketing. But going back to what Erica said, don't get there until you need to get there. Um, you really need to make sure that board and executive director understand that investment model if they're very used to response rate, average gift, acquisition, renewal, because that model and sometimes a little bit slower growth, it, it's not gonna happen in a year or two. It's a philosophical shift in your organization and you do not want an executive director to get disillusioned or frustrated and cut you off before you have a chance to succeed. Penny? Yeah, that's so true, Joe. Uh, and going back to what Erica said, I do have a couple of clients as well who are realizing that they don't need the perfect infrastructure in place to start asking. That has been what's held them back. Um, it's not a build it and they will come. It's an ask and they will come. Yes. Uh, so just starting anywhere, they think that um, they have to do it all in order to do anything. And that's just not the case. So it really is just starting to take those baby steps. And as Joe said, once you've got the momentum going, then starting to build the infrastructure around it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and just as I want to add, like, as, as you're growing and as you're generating, you know, some new monthly donors, um, your board and boss will get on board a little bit more, but it's taking that first step because it is, it's a long-term view as opposed to a short-term view. And um, I mean, I think that's that's something that a lot of nonprofits are struggling with anyhow. But yeah. uh, but yes, you need to have that long term view. But once you once you prove a couple of things, it's like, oh, OK, we can do this. We can do this. We're growing, you know, and and I think the, the, the biggest thing is like celebrating your little wins and sharing that is is really important as well, especially with people. I mean, there might be other de other departments or other people in your organization that don't don't know about this right they don't even know the power of of monthly giving they don't know what the value is so um so sharing it with others in your organization is is key as well so that they can oh i didn't know that was worth that much oh okay you know so that's that's really key totally agree when you start seeing that net income coming in and start sharing those net income numbers then it really does change the shape of that that long-term investment decision I love so what I heard just kind of wrapping that up is just get started the you know walk dog run approach so let's 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 define a goal for this year and let's do that thing whether it's get 100 new you know sustained givers like something that you can march towards and then do it so that's that's the that's kind of how I wrapped that up we have another poll question here um how often do you ask for a monthly gift so for those of you that um, have a sustainer program, how many times are you asking for people to, um, how many times are you asking for the monthly gift? So asking people to join the program to clarify that question. Never one time per year, two times per year. While that's up, Erica, Joe, what do you see as best practices for this? What do you typically see when people are asking for people to join the program? Yeah, so so I think that I mean, you know, like the the, the couple of tactical things, um, you know, and, and Joe mentioned it a little bit as, as well as like you do. I mean, I will always recommend having a dedicated um, sustainer only monthly giving only um landing page you know and a payment page so that way when you do ask for a monthly gift that that's where people go and at that point they're not confused with one time and you know one time gifts um so not every system can handle that anymore but if you can uh highly recommend that you start there so that's that's something uh and then again it's like try to look at opportunities of getting people to go to that page right yeah. it can literally be as simple as i mean i've worked with organizations that are small and they started by adding a button on the home page yes give monthly donate now right 
and by adding a button in every email and in every e-news and you know you're not going to get oodles and oodles of new monthly donors right away but it it's literally like chipping away at it and always planting the seeds about oh yeah you know yeah i saw that about monthly giving mm, i wasn't ready last week but now i'm considering it right yeah. you know so planting the seeds just little things so what it's are not big stuff anymore it's it start with little things but yeah. So never the 21%. So hopefully you just took something away from what Eric has said and like yep. let's at least put the option out there because if we don't ask, we won't get there. So let's let's ask. One so time per year. Okay. Yeah. yeah so 20, 26% one time per year, 17% two times per year, 29% quarterly, 7% monthly. So you're we're kind of evenly distributed, it feels like here um, in most areas with the exception of monthly, where we're seeing that, that, that it's not happening on a monthly basis. So the question I would ask this group is, what's the harm? I think you just answered it, Erica, and putting it out there all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Just put it out there all the time. And, and what's one more email? It's one email. Mm -hmm. Do it. You know, what do you got to lose? You learn from it, right? Especially, hey, how did you do? You know. Yeah, especially if that case is crystal clear as to why. So not only why our organization, but why monthly giving matters. Mm -hmm. I think that if we can be really intentional with that, you can start to move the needle there. Mm -hmm. So um, Joe, Brittany, anything else you'd want to add to that? Yeah, I would say we found that over time and depending on the nonprofit, it's almost a language shift as well. So you may not always be asking, you may not always put an email out there that says become a monthly donor and here's why, or a direct mail piece or even a telemarketing call. Those things you have to do and between Erica and your consultant and yourself, you'll test those and you'll learn kind of the ideal amount of time to dedicate, but it really is a language shift in which monthly giving just becomes intrinsic in all that you do. Uh, I know that we'll even sometimes include that in media opportunities. Mm -hmm. So if we've had a large um, animal rescue or, or a, a disaster response, even in our, in our boilerplate, in our media, it says to make sure that we have resources ongoing for disasters like this, please consider becoming a monthly donor. And we will sometimes send them to a landing page that, as Erica suggested, that is only monthly, or sometimes we'll send them to a landing page that has the choice. Um, it, it kind of depends on what we've learned. But at some point in time, you'll get so many successes that you'll find your language start shifting. So it isn't about when to and when not to make the ask you'll roll that into your program just like you do testing a member card yes. it's really a language shift in almost everything you do yeah, yeah i think there's previously been this fear that if you ask for monthly you disrupt the chance of people getting one-offs and that's not really what we're seeing um, we're doing a lot of segmentation where we make a primary ask for monthly secondary for one-off. It doesn't suppress the one-off giving response rate. So it's really low risk, high potential gain. Um, it marries nicely if you have a membership appeal that goes out on an annual basis, yeah. like have you thought about becoming monthly? That makes you a special member of our donor organization. Um, and what's nice about monthly, the why monthly, is it really appeals to the head and the heart, which folks get. They just, they understand that sustainable, predictable revenue and that that's a good way for them to support organization. Yeah. So as we think about monthly giving, uh, the next question we have is, um, which tactics should we embrace now? Like, what are the things that we must start doing today? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we kind of talked a little bit about that. It's like, yeah, having that special page if if your system can allow it. And and again, just try some things. Uh, don't be afraid. I think, again, don't overthink it, right? So what's one email? See what happens. I mean, you know, I, I've worked with organizations. We did like a Valentine's Day campaign, worked great. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Friendship Day. There's literally like a whole calendar with opportunities of days that might fit with your organization and say, well, maybe we'll just do a special day, you know, um, to, you know, we're going to call it sustainer day or whatever it is and, and, and try something and see what happens. Um, and, you know, again, I guess it's just like start somewhere and, and, and just, you know, learn from it. And, and it's almost like once you see the little successes, 
your mind, you know, will also go towards like, yeah, let's do that some more, right? Let's, let's, yeah, let's see what else can we do? What can we test? Hey, how often can we do this? You know, it's just like, it, people get more excited about this as they, as they see things, right? Um, so, so I think, and, 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 and Brittany, you said you've tested it. So that's great. So it doesn't right. hurt one time giving response, yeah. right? Again, it's one email, right? Yeah. And then, you know, like one of the best practices, I mean, and I think Joe, you probably even started this way back when, when at ASPCA is have the, the button, I mean, the, the, um, the laser uh, line on the appeal reply oh, yeah, form yeah. saying, make this a monthly gift. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and again, I've tested it, you've tested it. It doesn't hurt one time response. It, it's a laser version because obviously you want to make sure you're not putting that on there when you send an appeal to an existing monthly donor, right? Uh, and you may want to exclude it from your major donors, but wait, it's a laser line. It doesn't cost you anything. You're sending the appeal. What do you got to lose? Um, as long as you, I mean, I've seen, I'm a big scanner. I see all these packages, right? And, and as long as you make sure that if you're talking about monthly giving, and because sometimes I see buck slips in there and then I look at the reply form like, oh, well, there's actually no way to write on there that I can start a monthly give. So you want to make sure that that option is on your appeal reply form. So those are just two things you can you can do um, without investing extra money, really. So it's so true. I'm going to throw one extra thing that adds right into what Eric is saying. So write those two ideas down. And then the third is take your acknowledgement letters that you're mailing and do a PS. And if you don't have envelopes in your acknowledgement letters, because some people don't, just, just put a dedicated landing page, but it's the same thing. Um, it, the sooner, you know, a lot of people that do telemarketing to convert brand new donors to monthly donors, and you'll get there as your program gets more sophisticated, the best time to get somebody monthly, right, is, is when it's they're early. still excited and so happy about being part of your family. And so that thank you call that says, welcome, and oh, by the way, and let's talk about what an ongoing gift. You're, you'll get there when you have the money and the bodies, but short term, just put it in your thank you letter mm -hmm. with a dedicated URL. And as Erica says, doesn't cost you anything. And just tacking on to what Joe said, what works so nicely about that with new donors in particular is they don't have that established behavior of giving with you yet. So it's a great time to, to suggest monthly because then that's how they retain with your organization. So t let's talk a little bit about just the emerging trends. What's the future of sustaining giving? What are the things that you guys are seeing in the uh, marketplace that we should be paying attention to? Mm. Yeah, so one of the things I'm seeing is I am seeing a little bit of like um, movement towards other frequencies. So mm -hmm. monthly, quarterly, annually. Um, the reality is that if you can get somebody to give monthly, typically they will give you more money. Mm -hmm. So, um, but sometimes people say, well, hey, if we can offer quarterly and annually, that's because that's what donors want, then fine, go ahead and, uh, and, and offer it. So that's, uh, that's one trend that I'm seeing more of. And, and especially like, you know, for bigger organizations that are doing canvassing, they are offering like other, um, other frequencies. And then the other thing, which I'm really happy about, because I'm European, so I grew up with electronic funds transfer, ACH, direct debit, automatic bank transfer, right? So I'm seeing a trend that more and more payment platforms have ACH built in. And again, if you can get somebody to give their bank account information and start giving monthly, I mean, your retention rate is going to go up even more because, you know, people don't change their bank account that often, you know, you don't have to muck with those like uh, pesky credit cards that expire. So if you can, if you can offer that on your, on your payment page, absolutely. Uh, that will, uh, that will help you with your, uh, input. and younger donors are more comfortable with giving by bank account. Yeah. So, so that's definitely a trend I'm seeing. For sure. Um, and I'll add on to that and say, I think, I think my panelists may disagree. I think as younger 
consumers are more comfortable doing things on a monthly basis from Netflix to whatever your meditation subscription on your iPhone. We might see a downturn in average gifts for monthly donors, but I think that's going to be just fine because as the population becomes more comfortable with the idea of subscription-based lifestyles, it's going to be an easier, quicker um, case for engagement than we used yeah. to have to make in a four page spread letter and somebody showing up at your, your door begging. Um, and you're also seeing so much more uh, consumers want the control over their accounts. Um, Erica sent me a great article about canceling, not canceling. We all talked about, you know, I've got True Bill on my phone because I'd subscribed to like Candy Crush or something crazy and couldn't figure out how to get out of it. I'm not seeing yet consumers looking at their true bills and making subscriptions. I think Brittany's comment about heart versus heart and head, mm -hmm. heart monthly donors are very different than me accidentally getting too many Candy Crush lives. And I get that. But I also want the ability to access all of my stuff, whether it's Candy Crush or my support for Houston SPCA. Um, and that's, you know, back in the day, I remember putting a very first customer service person who was the monthly donor phone call in person before that, you know, it was, they were check writing and it was very different. So my two themes are transparency, ease of access to your account. And then also if average gifts seem lower as time goes on, I wouldn't worry about that trend. That's my two. Yeah. And that's, um, that's similar to what I was going to say with the type of donors that we're seeing coming on as monthly, they are younger. Uh, they're going to have a lower average gift, but they're also going to have a higher retention because so many of them are making that decision on their own to sign up to that form of giving. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Not a not at the end of a phone call, which is still valuable, but it is. It's become a more decision driven type of giving, hasn't it? I hadn't mm -hmm. thought about that before, but it really has been. It's a it's a little more in the consumer's hands now. But if you don't, you said it. Uh, ask and they will come. What, what Erica's shirt said, if you don't have the place to catch them when they come to you. Yeah. Get it ready. So we have some people on this call that probably have a dedicated person that maybe is managing a sustained giving program. We have some people that it's part of their part-time job um, while they're doing other things. Um, and we have some people that are just trying to get started with a program. Um, what is one piece of advice that you would give a fundraiser today that is looking to start a, a program outside of um, don't overthink it? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, I would say just just get started is one. And um, I mean, it, it, it does take a driver. So um, so I think hope that after today's session that you're going to end this whole series that you're going to be really like committed and say wow i'm going to do this right because you want to have that one big person that's going to drive this and be motivated and write down some goals you mentioned it, rebecca earlier write down a goal and and put it on your sheet and I can guarantee you, you're going to reach that goal. I mean, it can't be too crazy, right? But I mean, like, write down a goal that you think is realistic. If you have five monthly donors now, well, what if you grew it by 25 for the end of the year or something like that? So, and just work towards that. And then, you know, you'll be, uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. So write down a goal and, and, and start driving towards it by doing stuff, starting somewhere. Uh, I would also say find a buddy, even if that's a person on this call, somebody, if you have the luxury of being able to have an agency that supports you, that's great because they can bring other industry perspectives. If you're kind of doing this on your own and you're a small to mid-sized organization and you don't have an agency, grab somebody from the DMFA, the DMAW, the ANA list, somebody else that's doing monthly and exchange email addresses and check in with each other on the goals that Erica just mentioned, um, because it just makes you feel so much better to know that you are not alone in this. So find a buddy. Love it. Brittany? Um, I would say be as informed as you can when you make that first ask. So figure out what you can, what you can about who your donors are if you have any that are monthly right now, what makes them unique and use that to, to sort of catapult your, your case for support and then just adjust as you go. Yeah, and to that, Brittany, if I may ask, um, if you have some monthly donors now, ask them why they're mm -hmm. giving monthly. Yeah. Write them a note. And, and, you know, I mean, I started working with an organization that had 15 monthly donors and that was the first thing we did. It's like, write a note, 
little three by five card reply envelope. Why are you giving monthly? And they were like blown away by one some of those wonderful testimonials. And then they could use it everywhere, everywhere. They right. could use Yep. Gender sentiment is so important in that as you're thinking mm -hmm. about how to build this program and understanding the why and then setting that goal. And then figuring out, okay, how do I, how do I go from, you said, I think Erica, five to 25. So what needs to happen in order for that to be true? Write the plan and work the plan. I think we have just a few minutes. I know we're right up on time for questions. Leah, is there anything in the chat that, uh, questions that you want to throw our way? Yes, uh, we have some really great stuff that's come in. Uh, a couple sort of helpful stories that people have shared, um, as well as some questions. Um, one that I really liked is, would you suggest changing this, uh, or I, I think they're asking if you want to add on or change, but um, the bulk of our clients are wealthy slash high net worth and they're used to large asks. Would you mm -hmm. still suggest this individual start a monthly giving program? Mm -hmm. I mean, I typically um, like recommend that you focus monthly giving on your lower end donors, $250 and under. Um, if you have a conversation with a big big donor, like say somebody has made a gift of $5,000 and they say, geez, I wish I could do more, but I can't write a $10,000 check. Well, ask them if maybe they want to consider $1,000 a month or something, right? So you can have that conversation, but it's much more, it's more, you know, very specific to that particular donor. So most, most monthly donors come from, uh, most sustainers come from the smaller donors, the, the donors who give you multiple times that care and they just cannot write the big checks yet. Agreed. Another question I last, uh, question I liked was, do you think a sustainer ask should be a standalone appeal or included mm -hmm. in our two existing annual appeals? Uh, right now, we have it as an option for both, but not getting many bites. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I would say keep it in the appeals that you have now, but but yeah, test a standalone appeal. Or I, test I still, it being a stronger yeah. emphasis in yes. those two appeals. Yeah. And add it to the thank you gifts of the current appeals that you've got. Mm -hmm. And then I'd pick up on um, if you do already have some monthly givers, understanding what we said a minute ago, a little bit about their donor sentiment and why they give, and then seeing if you can model people that look like them inside your file. And yeah. there's some tools out there that you can do, you can use pretty easily in order to kind of say, okay, these are the people that look like monthly donors on my file. What kind of ask do I want to put mm -hmm. in front of them? Or case, sorry, not ask. Mm -hmm. um, on the heels of that uh, answer, what donor segments do you target for sustainer giving? Great question. So, uh, mm -hmm. and again, you know, I know uh, you have you have specific uh, segmentation criteria there, but it's typically people who give multiple times, who have given in the last six months, last twelve months, right? So they're recent donors, and they they give month multiple times. But I know a lot of organizations may not mail that often, especially smaller ones. They may only go out twice or four times a year in the mail, so it's harder for donors to give more more times right so um but yeah look at your multi-donors and then if you only offer a credit card well take a look at anybody who's made a credit card gift and focus like target them you know so um so so there's lots to lots to uh, target but start start there yeah I, I, it goes back to kind of just getting started that both erica and Brittany alluded to too um, I don't put large dollar donors into monthly giving either. So if you're a low mailer uh, frequency of mailings um, and you are not going to be able to add a separate standalone mailing and segmentation, it could just be annual fund gets mailed. Everybody that's given a gift in the last 36 months, that may be as deep as your segmentation goes. That's okay. Maybe you pull something like people that have given in the last yeah. six to 18 months or zero to 18 months and just kind of just just use your best judgment i think the one of the good news is because of the shifting way we see subscription-based society the profile of what used to be the perfect segment to go into a monthly ask is also shifting so you probably can't really go wrong as long as you keep track of who you mailed and how they did start there Um, let's see, let's try to get one more, uh, question in here. Um, while I'm kind of hunting around for one, I did like a comment that Linda put in. She said she's had luck with aligning specific needs slash expenses 
that the organization purchases monthly um, and tailoring that to a, a sustainer ask. Um, and she, she talks about, she works at a children's theater troupe. And so the needs range from tuition assistance to how much is spent on copy paper and even toilet paper for a month for their program. Um, and she said people really loved having that tangible case for support tied to the ask. Part of the donor. Absolutely. Yeah, dollar handles play very well yeah. with monthly if folks can yeah. put it. Yeah. Um, line of sight on what it is yeah. that's going to be an ongoing need and how they can support that specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as you're not too high. So I think that's that's the key. So try to go low because that is, especially now where everything's so expensive. So if you can do five dollars a month, ten dollars a month as the lowest option, that's uh, that's key. Yeah. So because mm -hmm. I sometimes I see people and they're like, oh well, it's fifty dollars a month as the first option. It's like it's a little that's a little tough. So that's, that's called an upgrade. <laughs> Oh, and yeah. for both of those, for those of you that haven't started it yet, I love needs-based fundraising. Just make sure somewhere in your copy for your auditors that you say something like to help with this and things like this. I'm not using the exact words, but make sure that you word it in a way that maintains the ability to keep it unrestricted yeah. if you need that money for unrestricted. Otherwise, your auditors may come in and say that you have to use that for exactly what you said. So there's an yeah. easy way around that, but I just want to put that in people's minds to be thinking about. Great. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I'm going to bundle these two next one together. So the first first part of the question is, how often should we thank monthly donors? And the second one, which is more successful, digital platform asks or traditional mailings? It, it's, it depends. No, well, mm -hmm. it, I, I'm going to tell you the, the typical consultant address <laughs> answer is like, <laughs> it depends, right? So no, but I mean, um, the uh you know digital works mail works mail in conjunction with digital works even better so if you can get a mailing out and a digital campaign you know like think about like a sustainer drive uh i have several organizations that you know did that around valentine's day or now like a summer sustainer drive with a prime goal and what have you mail you know mail email phone social media phone sometimes even as well that works really really uh well um and uh and i can't remember this the first uh, what was the first part of the question? Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Uh, how often should you thank your monthly donors? How often should you thank? Yeah. So, um, I mean, in your if you're getting people to to give online, typically like you get an online uh, thank you that comes out, and um, I always recommend that you replace that with something a little bit warmer and fuzzier and make it less of a receipt and more of a like, hey, your monthly gift is making a difference, and here's how. Um, you don't need monthly thank you letters, um, but again, it, this kind of like comes back to what happens when when somebody joins is you tell them exactly what they can expect. Um, mm -hmm. Keep it simple. Just tell them from now on you're going to get updates on how your gifts are making a difference, and every January we'll send you an overview of all your giving for tax purposes. And then you don't have to send them hard copy thank you letters in the mail. I do recommend that the first time when they join, you send them something tangible or an, mm -hmm. a hard copy letter, preferably with a person's name and phone number and email address that the donor can reach out to if they have questions. Everything she said. Yep. We also do a new donor welcome email series that's automated if you have a system that allows you to do that. And for the monthly online donors, um, we it took us about a year to get there here, even though I've done it in other places and I know it works really well. Now in their sort of monthly confirmation that their credit card charge went through, we add a blurb of a, of a story. And it's probably a story we've already researched and gathered pictures for for other marketing needs. And we just put it in a folder and somebody goes in uh, to our system. We use every action as our online system and we can customize part of that email. So every month they'll get a little email blurb of another, uh, a new pet story. Uh, so it ties it a little bit more to mission and then the January tax receipt for sure. And with that January tax receipt, um, I'd recommend you make it very stewardship focused because that is when folks see that total line item of what they're giving in the year. So you wanna remind them what a difference their gift is making at that time as well. Good point. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, one final question. I can't resist this one. Everyone seems to be hanging on. So if you guys are good to answer another question or two, I'm good to keep asking them. 
Um, but this one, I loved it one. This, Sue asked, what is the current thinking of talking about, um, uh, of, of, I'm trying to like, rephrase this in a way, but um, talking about sustainer giving as being easy for the donor. So mm -hmm. I, and it seems like she's trying to get at a donor centric approach versus what the organization needs. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it's I, in my <laughs> view, I mean, multi giving is very easy for the donor mm. and it, it fits their budget. I mean, you know, it's it's like they can choose. I mean, they can keep track of it. They're in control of their giving. Um, so it's it's absolutely very donor centric uh, in my book. So, yeah. yeah, it goes back to that head part of the head heart ask like folks, you know, they want things to be as seamless and easy as possible. So from that regard, I don't think we're swallowed that. Yeah, and it's interesting too, because we, even though we have a group of sustainers, even within that group, there are people that choose sustainer giving for different reasons. Some it's because all heart, some it is a budgeting thing. Some it's just because they're comfortable with the idea of adding a credit card monthly. So I think unless you want to dig some really deep research on everybody that gives to you and sort of identify head heart, I think you're a hundred percent accurate in any reason to give a person to give monthly, whether it is her head or heart, you're probably gonna hit a bunch of people that are giving for that reason. Yeah. Great question though. Yeah, these yeah, are great was, questions. Um, I think we, uh, w one last one for sure this time. What is the best way to remind recurring donors that they made a pledge? Oh. It's the best <laughs> way, best time, best What's way. What's the best way, best, best method way. to remind recurring donors that they made a pledge? Well, by recognizing them, um, you know, like, so every, I mean, have a special segment in your email program um, and, you know, have a, have a special version of your letters. If you're starting to go do uh, appeals or if you have print newsletters, email newsletters, and every time you say, thank you so much for your wonderful ongoing support. And let me tell you a story, you know, so mm -hmm. it can literally be one or two lines. Um, but, but just the fact that you let the donor know know um that that they are special uh i think that's that's key but again don't overthink it you know so but if you're doing an appeal and and depending upon how the size of your organization if you can hand write a note if you can laser a handwritten note saying thanks so much for your ongoing support if you have a name um you don't need a name per se but it does help with recognition so but again don't spend gazillion dollars uh coming up with a name just like brainstorm about it uh and if you don't have one don't wait um to get started so but that helps like hey you're a member of uh do what was the name of your program again you're the uh, guardian yeah the guardians the right guardians so yeah yeah so you know so just something that saying hey thanks so much for your ongoing monthly support as a member of a very special group of supporters of guardians you know so um yeah wounded warrior project was advanced guard because that meant something to them and i could do a whole other session on this and i know we don't have time but let me throw this out there too i i have become less of a fan of micro branding within nonprofits because if you are very lucky you will have a monthly donor who also may qualify for mid-level program and may also participate in your plan giving program and if you spend a tremendous amount of time creating these complex giving clubs with their own icons and all the identity and the benefits then what club supersedes what and when yes. and you just the donor doesn't really give a they want to save animals children the environment yep. survivors of domestic violence that is it do not overthink this just look at erica's shirt go everybody go buy one mm -hmm. um, giving clubs help in to what erica said so it helps remind a person because i think you're right it's really important to remind someone what they've given to I've, I've changed my philosophy so much over my time in nonprofits. I believe that the quickest way to remind a pledge is get the credit card at the time of the ask. If you're still doing check writing donors, that is okay. It's going to be a little more laborious, but you'll figure that out. Um, I, I personally just think remind them constantly that without their gift, you cannot save fill in the blank. Yeah. That's, and that's, a, that's a whole other session. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Leah's like, cut it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm like, we should have blocked a whole hour for this because yeah. Yeah. Here the whole time. Um, I do have one kind of parting gift for uh, our attendees today. Megan, can we pull up our slide with our forthcoming, uh, well, 
that, that as well. Um, so we've been talking a lot about sustainer giving and sustaining giving programs. Um, and we have a amazing segment that is pre-built right within giving DNA. That's our proprietary uh, tool. Um, and you can actually just download that segment of people who are sustainer giving candidates and you can put it right into um, a mail or an email campaign and it's just right there for you. So we didn't want to part ways without sharing that with you. If you're interested, you can get a demo of giving DNA to learn more about that capability. And then we also have a free gift that should be coming to your inbox tomorrow. And we'll also be sending out to our entire mailing list today, which is a brand new white paper all on recurring giving, sustainer giving. We kind of use these terms um, interchangeably around here. Um, and so you will be able to get some, some of this content, some of these stats around sustainer giving delivered right to your inbox in an ebook format. Um, as we close today, just wanna to thank everybody who uh, set aside their lunch or their late afternoon, their early, their mid morning, whatever time it is for you, whatever time zone you're in. Um, and, it's, and then and a third and final uh, thank you to our panelists who stuck around and answered your questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so thank much. You. This is wonderful. It is. Just go Keep do up it. the good work, go everybody. <laughs> yes, you can do it. You can, you do, can it. do it. Absolutely. You, you can, can do, do it. it. Don't, Don't overthink it. it. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink Call it. Call a buddy. <laughs> Call a friend. Yes. Ask them what yes. they're doing. Steal well. Join Borrow some it. other, <laughs> join some, or some programs, you know? Great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. See ya. Bye, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.